Okay, <clears throat> hi everybody, and I'm um, sort of winging it here just a little bit. I want to start when, yes, I'm just, well, it's, it's exact, isn't it? The rising degree here in Finland at this present place, Rauhanlina, the castle of peace, we call it, is um, six plus degrees of Leo. And that's all about the constellations in the sky. Let's take a look here at that. Yep, the constellations in the sky. And uh, even if I'm a little bit off here uh, in terms of the exact second, we are really starting in this uh, degree. And what I'd like to do is bring to you um, some history uh, in terms of the externalization of the hierarchy. There are a series of collected essays by the Tibetan which have been brought together in that uh, particular book. And Although some of them deal with issues that are going on, let's say, in the 1930s, early 1930s or so, um, what I propose to do is to work with essays that deal with the uh, onset of the Second World War and take us all the way through to the end of the book, to 1949. So it's about 11 years. Now, so much has uh, passed. Since that time, I guess it would be uh, about 70 years have passed since that book was uh, completed. And the world has changed very much, but the, the seeds of the present world situation are dealt with by the Tibetan. And so I think we can understand much more fully why we have the kind of world we have at this moment and then uh, what i what tuya and i hope to do is to uh have some webinars in which we can discuss the externalization uh in more modern terms um i do think we are in process with it when the great hierarchical conclave occurs uh, in 2025, then decisions will be made about the actual timing of the externalization of, I suppose, the higher initiates and the masters themselves. And this is something that really has to be understood. They have to be present in the five great planetary centers, surrounded by their initiates, surrounded by the disciples of the initiates, and the governments of the world have to make application to these masters and their groups because of the quality of the advice which is um, emerging from them. In other words, they will be recognized as of such great wisdom that their counsel will be sought. Now, that's a huge organizational task, and we can say that, well, maybe things will occur in the immediate future which will wake humanity up to the dire situation in which we are presently existing and to the potentials of a new and better way. And maybe all of this will occur very fast. But uh, my present estimation is that the third installment of the teaching, which begins in 2025 or very much around that year, must be given and assimilated before the Masters themselves will be recognized as existing, as holding their position in these five planetary centers, New York, London, Geneva, Darjeeling, 
uh, Tokyo, uh, before they will be recognized as holding their position in these centers and as surrounded by initiates and disciples and as a source of wise counsel which can guide many of the more, let's say, enlightened governments um, of the world. This is my estimation at the moment, and I think it will take us into the 22nd century. We know uh, astronomically and from some of the things that Master DK has written, especially in a uh, revelatory letter um, to uh, Roberto Assagioli, that the true beginning astronomically of the Aquarian Age is in the year 2117. And interestingly enough, a transit again of Venus across the face of the sun is occurring in that year. So, we, you know, that's about 98 years away, or, you know, just a little more than that, and promises to be the time when the sixth ray energy has uh, largely disappeared, except in its larger cycles, and the Piscean energy has waned down to a negligible uh, degree of influence, and the and the unencumbered Aquarian energy uh, really begins to be with us, even though it's been with us in a sense ever since Master R as Francis Bacon, or Francis Bacon as the becoming Master R began his work in the uh, early part of the 17th century. That was an Aquarian impulse, definitely, and he was so Aquarian, you know. So, uh, but nevertheless, the dissipation of the sixth ray and the Piscean energy in their obstructive modes has to occur. And uh, he tells us that by the end of the present century that we're in, we're in the 21st uh, century, those energies will have faded. Uh, virtually uh, out of the realm of influence. Of course, in a larger sense, there are some larger six-ray cycles, and, you know, Pisces will always be with us in a sense. Uh, but in terms of the influence of an equinoctial age, um, those energies will have faded. So what I'm trying to say is that we have a while to wait perhaps uh well we can't really wait we have to work of course but we have to be patient about what we call the externalization of the hierarchy and the reappearance of the uh, great lord the head of hierarchy the christ there's so much work to be done that work is along the lines we've been given you know enhance the triangles work enhance the work of world goodwill, enhance the wide distribution and explanation of the great invocation and of the great invocations, you know, the first and second um, verses or stanzas or whatever you want to call them. We're used to thinking of the great invocation as the one we have from 1945, but the earlier great invocations are important too. And somehow to continue our intense subjective work, uh, working for a uh, right human relations, uh, a system of right human relations that will help overcome the present uh, uh, last ditch fight of materialism, which I, th I think any of us who are uh, attentive can see occurring uh, dictatorships are on the rise democracy is challenged and uh, democracy is the great hierarchical method of governmental expression and so we have to find a way to um offset 
some of these undesirable but predictable responses of the forces of materialism. And, you know, we know how much we have benefited from the work of Master Decay. It's about a hundred years now that he began to dictate to Alice Bailey in the year 1919. Here it is, the year 2019. It's a hundred years. And he worked for 30 years. We have no idea how long he will work with whomever his amanuensis may be, if that's the way he's going to work, um, with the third installment. But we have to be very alert to its appearance. Now, we know that so many theosophists of the time really rejected uh, anything coming through Alice Bailey until, you know, by night <laughs> they began to read and understand that this was profound material. And I suppose by the time A Treatise on Cosmic Fire was published in 2025, even the skeptics uh, who could really think had to admit that this was not coming from Alice Bailey per se and from the content of her own mind and consciousness. So, you know, this is going to be coming out and there'll be a lot of work done in astrology one can expect, and uh, I think it'll carry a very first-ray note, um, and maybe will be synthetic in also synthesizing the second and third rays. I think with Blavatsky's presentation uh, on the history of the planet and the secret doctrine and so forth, we had the third-ray presentation. Alice Bailey's presentation was along the second-ray line, and we can expect the natural progression towards the first ray. But it will uh, include, of course, the other rays. I think there's no question about that. So, you know, this is a little introduction um, indicating, you know, what I would hope to do. And Tui and I will be working with the ASK program as we ordinarily do, but we will uh, maybe have some. Uh, uh, webinars and discussions on how we can prepare for the externalization of the hierarchy. Now, I personally believe the way to prepare is to keep on emphasizing triangles, the world goodwill work, the distribution of the great invocation, the esoteric education work, which is going on in various places. Now, our particular method of doing that is with the Moria Federation, but obviously the Arcane School is a very original and important uh, source of distribution, the School of Esoteric Studies, uh, work that goes on at Meditation Mount. I mean, you know, obviously uh, the School of Living Ethics. I'm going to leave things out, of course. I mean, there are many, many esoteric schools. They have to keep doing what they're doing with... Uh, a good attitude toward their fellow educators. Uh, that is, uh, we may not all emphasize the same things, uh, but we're going to uh, see the value in any attempt, which is at least reasonable, to educate humanity along the lines of the Asia's wisdom. And I think, you know, that's the way to that's the way to prepare. I do not see at least what I can see, that suddenly we're going to expect the Christ in 2025. It's just impossible in terms of what the Tibetan says has to be in place if we are going to uh, expect the great wave of anticipation and the coming of the great Lord. So much has to be in place which is not yet in place, and towards that we have to work in the ways that we have been working and we have to work uh, empowered by the new um, dispensation of the teaching. And of course, we have to recognize it, you know, and maybe it will only be after 2025 that we'll be able to begin recognizing the Tibetan at work again. It's no easy thing. Because, you know, there's lots of good uh, material out there and lots of bad material, you know. And uh, we don't want to fall for the glamorous stuff. And uh, 
And we don't want to pretend, and we don't want to suddenly get swept by ambition and say, oh, I'm the one who's doing it, you know, it's very dangerous. But the quality of what the Tibetan will produce, um, that will be uh, the indication uh, to those who are savvy and have understanding and uh, really have uh, a, a deep, uh, deeper knowledge of the ageless wisdom. How deep can it go? It can go extremely deep. And we human beings were still in the shallows when it comes to our knowledge of the ageless wisdom. But hopefully there will be a recognition because the Tibetan will say things that only he could say. I've seen the imitations. I've seen the product of those who feel that they are somehow in touch with the Tibetan and giving out the third installment of the teaching. But, you know, uh, as good as they may be, the author could have written these things himself or herself. When it comes to a book like Initiation Human and Solar, well, we just know. You just look at it. No normal human being can write that with authority uh, and uh, explain in such a logical manner the method of uh, initiation, its significance, the requirements, uh, what we have to go through to experience it and all that. No. No, that, that bears the Tibetan stamp. And, you know, hopefully we'll be filled with sufficient understanding to recognize that. Now, all of that has to be given. Who knows how it's going to be given? I sometimes joke, uh, you know, that we now we have all of this. Uh, the Tibetan doesn't need an amanuensis. All he needs is a good computer. And one of those uh, <laughs> dragon of wisdom, well, I, you know, it's, it's called uh, dragon, whatever it is, naturally speaking, <laughs> dragon of wisdom, naturally speaking. He just has to talk to his computer. But no, I don't think that that's the way it's going to be done. And I think that uh, the contact with an amanuensis is, <coughs> is very necessary. And uh, will it be Alice Bailey? Well, I don't know. It depends upon the ray and what has to be brought out, maybe along the scientific and political line. Maybe her rays are suitable, maybe they're not suitable. Um, it was a different amanuensis. It wasn't HPB again. It was Alice Bailey. And now will it be still a different amanuensis? But I do believe an amanuensis uh, will appear. The, the plans are already laid, I believe, and we're only six uh, or so years away from the appearance of that amanuensis and maybe already the inner dialogue between that individual and uh, and the Tibetan, uh, you know, that process is underway. So, you know, all, all things are in good hands, and we have simply to be filled with enough understanding to recognize it when it comes. But, you see, to, to jump in and to think that the hierarchy is now going to externalize uh, in a completely recognizable form uh, is, I think, uh, jumping the gun. Uh, I think for those who know, there will be recognition. And from the year 2025 and the Great Conclave, what does he say? That there will be a, uh, the plans will be laid for the first stages of the real externalization. You just, I don't know if it's on page six, uh, 699, is it, uh, of externalization? Uh, Okay, we can see I've got uh, a lot of this underlined because it's all, uh, it's very important, this material. Um, yeah, from that time on, the network. Well, let me read this to you. You know, I've read it to many. Um, basically, we have to continue the preparation of men's minds and hearts. Uh, for the uh, externalization. Okay, so um, <laughs> we have to continue. When the task of the preparation 
of men's minds is further advanced, and obviously that implies that we have still a lot of work to do, when the knowledge of the existence of the masters and their hierarchical endeavor and of the united hierarchy of our planet are a commonly recognized truth, and when active goodwill is recognized as a real national asset in all lands. Think about that, and really how far we are from it, except maybe in certain countries, <laughs> where gross national happiness is the uh, product to be harvested. <laughs> okay, when active goodwill is recognized as a real national asset in all lands, all lands, huh? then the speed of the externalization of the hierarchy will be greatly increased. Then the five spiritual um, centers will begin to take definite form, and maybe not until then, you know, as much as we might like it to be the case. Then the five spiritual centers will take definite, begin to take definite form and will call also for recognition. The groups they're working will be known, and they will also be in close touch with each other. A pentagram closely interwoven, and from that time on the network of initiates and disciples under the direction of the masters will be worldwide, and in every field of human expression the opinion, the opinion of these men and women and of the masters presiding at the five centers and in their affiliated groups will be recognized as of immense value by all governmental uh, economic and social organizations. Okay, so um, so they will be recognized then and then, you know, and it's not until then, 698, 699 here in the book Externalization of the Hierarchy, um, then under a wave, great wave of spiritual inspiration, the divine spirit of expectancy for the reappearance of the Christ will sweep through the world. You know, maybe it's already sweeping, but you know, there are just so many false alarms, you know. It will then be regarded as credible and creditable, and his coming will provide the germ for all world hope. The reason for this will be that the most respected, enlightened, and cultured people on the planet will be looking for him. And then, my brothers, he will come, bringing new energies of love and compassion and implementing the spirit of fresh enlightenment. To these important events must also be added the new revelation for which all men wait and to which they will be able to respond owing to the needed and new stimulation. And I suppose the third installment will prepare us for that. I'm going to look for one more thing. Probability. Maybe that's... Um, uh, th yeah, this is the one that I'm looking for, and it's on page 530. And it tells us a little bit about what we can expect from the present conclave. Now, you know, in my opinion, at least, it's the next conclave of 2125, which will be the synthetic conclave and will mean that the three great installments of teaching have been assimilated and that the masters are more or less in their place with their initiates and disciples. Thus, a great and new movement is proceeding, and a tremendously increased interplay and interaction is taking place. This will go on until AD 2025. Well, you know, we're in the last six plus years of the uh, era of the forerunner. We're, we're just on the threshold of this date that is here indicated, written back there in the 40s, you know, but now we're there. During the years intervening, and we can test and judge whether thus has been the case, during the years intervening between now, that's in the 40s, 
And then, that's now, um, very great changes will be seen taking place. And at the General Assembly of the hierarchy, that hints towards the United Nations, of course, held as usual every century in 2025. Now, note this. The date in all probability will be set for the first stage of the externalization of the hierarchy. The date in all probability will be set for the first date of the externalization of the hierarchy. So, you know, obviously we're not there yet. And this is a very definite thing which can occur. The present cycle from now until that date is called technically the stage of the forerunner, 1965 to 2025, 60 years. It is preparatory in nature, testing in its methods. Have we been tested? Have our groups been tested? Have our nations been tested? Has humanity been tested? And intended to be revelatory in its techniques and results. What's the best way to work? We're finding that out. You can see, therefore, that Chohans, masters, initiates, world disciples, disciples and aspirants affiliated with the hierarchy are all, at this time, passing through a great cycle of activity. And then it, you know, it goes on. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, this is just to give us a sense of timing. There are some people, you know, who have looked at that year, which is uh, 2025, and said, well, that's it. The Christ appears. But now, you know, if we read carefully what the Tibetan is uh, saying, then we get some sense of the work we have to do. It's nothing dramatically new, actually, that we have to continue with. It's just a uh, intensification of the good that has been presented uh, in the second dispensation, and whatever may be presented as methods of work in the third dispensation of the teaching. Of course, not everybody is obviously working with Alice Bailey or with the Tibetan, and there will be, you know, many methods uh, of work. But for us, you know, we have this Blavatsky Bailey tradition, and we have the Tibetan, and we will have to uh, work at intensifying our point of tension. I just want to get somehow uh, help us get a, a sense of the timing of this whole thing, because a realistic look around us will show us that years must pass. Uh, you know, we're talking about that first stage there, that first stage um, in the externalization. Then, in all probability, in all probability, that's not for certain, will be set for the first stage, the date will be set for the first stage of the externalization of the hierarchy. And it's not necessarily 2025, you know, it can be different for the different planetary centers and so forth. All of this question of timing is in the hands of the hierarchy and they measure their timing not only by date, but by how much, uh, humanity has accomplished. So I would just say, let's make the most out of the teaching we have been given. We have six and a half years, roughly. Six and a little less years, okay. Um, let's assimilate, let's apply, let's anticipate, let's uh, get rid of as much glamour and illusion as we can so that we can truly recognize the continuity of the teaching as did not happen uh, when Alice Bailey began to write. Maybe a few people recognized, I don't know, but there was a general rejection of what she was bringing 
forth, you know, based on what? Jealousy and, you know, incapability of really recognizing the Tibetan's vibration, whatever. Let's see if we can uh, recognize the Tibetan's vibration when it again emerges and, uh, you know, and be very careful about that and very thoughtful and very filled with uh, understanding. And up to that time, up to that uh, year 2025, just use the methods we have been given. You know, let's really plunge into the teaching so that our degree of assimilation is much more profound than it is at present. And with profound assimilation becomes uh, comes the ability to apply in the correct manner. So anyway, um, this little sort of uh, introduction uh, lays a foundation for the work which uh, we can accomplish over the next number of years as we look at this book, The Externalization of the Hierarchy, and look for the history and how things progressed and where decisions were correct and not and what the dangers are and what the opportunities are and so forth and uh, see how our present world situation grew out of what the Tibetan presented in his essays uh, concerning the late 1940s and uh, late 1930s and the 1940s. And that's what uh, Tui and I will try to present to you and I'll I'll continue my usual method of uh, reading through the text maybe I won't begin at the very beginning of externalization of the hierarchy I think I might wait until page 60 or so and only later go back and take in some of the earlier pages because they have been dealt with in other ways in other books it's a lot about the seed groups and uh, when, you know, our work in discipleship in the New Age deals with that. So um, it's sort of from the entrance to the Second World War that I'll be making my comments. Um, and then to the struggle and the winning of that war and then the forward lookingness of the Tibetan into the years uh, ahead. Those are the things I'll be dealing with and maybe relating um, those things to present conditions in society. I'm, you know, I'm not particularly along the political line, but, you know, may be able to say something of social or political relevance. And uh, then Tui and I will uh, uh, offer, I think, some webinars uh, about, you know, present circumstances just for general discussion, and, and, and that discussion will be fed by the kind of reading we can do in, in this book. It's all one process, this externalization of the hierarchy. You kind of wonder if it didn't all begin with Master R in his earlier incarnation as Francis Bacon, you know, back in the late 1500s and early 1600s, the Aquarian impulse was given a a huge push, and the uh, age of science uh, came upon us and led to our technological uh, civilization and to entirely new possibilities for humanity. Maybe, maybe they aren't really so new because probably in Atlantis uh, we were able to uh, participate in these kinds of things under the direction of our uh, superiors, who were the ones who really knew the laws and uh, we being less intelligent than we are now uh, could participate but of course that didn't work out as we know and the hierarchy had to go in a way uh, not exactly underground but they had to retreat and uh, offer the mysteries in a different way and now they're coming out again and they'll be openly walking uh, among among human beings so it's an amazing time in which we live, and I think it's important that we take up this book and have some kind of idea of the true timing 
of the externalization. We don't, you know, we can't say low here, low there. We're advised not to. Here's the Christ. Here's the Christ. No, here's the Christ. No, we can't do that. At such an hour as we do not know, and when the conditions are ripe, the hierarchy will appear, those who are externalizing uh, in the way they are supposed to appear, and eventually the Christ will appear such that every eye will see him, whether or not every consciousness will recognize him, that's a whole different matter. But uh, we have uh, six and a half years or a little less to prepare for this great conclave and then realizing that a huge amount of work lies ahead of us during the 21st century and into the 22nd century. And then indeed we may come closer to the time when the hierarchy will really be uh, as it must be in its proper place with respect to the five planetary centers and a whole new phase of Aquarianism will be ours. Well, look, I'm not going to worry about the timing of this little preliminary uh, discussion. What I am going to do, uh, I, th I think, you know, what I want to get across, hopefully, has gotten across. And some degree of patience is counseled as we consider the requirements. We don't want to fall into illusion and start looking for certain things to happen at a timing which is not theirs. So um, what I want to do here is then just end this little uh, preamble, which uh, sort of promises the road ahead and uh, some programs that uh, Tui and I will be offering, and uh, I want to end it with a great invocation. <clears throat> okay. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. <coughs> oh. Okay, okay, thanks everybody. This is just the first in a series of uh, sort of discussions. Uh, I guess it's me talking to myself for the moment, but th that will change. And um, regarding the externalization of the hierarchy and the uh, reappearance 
of the Christ and uh, the development of that work in the book, starting roughly from page 60 or so in the externalization. I'll do the other part again in more in line with the seed groups and all the way to the end of the book, however long that takes, plus some webinars which we will offer to you know to have some discussions about what we can do for this externalization from my point of view it's quite simple we keep on doing what we're doing only we do it better but you know there'll be a lot of um, there'll be thoughts and uh, we'll try to offer that it's the time of deliberation now you know we've just had this uh, day of uh, sort of resolution, you know, obligation. The, the um, Blue Rose Sisters have had the Mary's Day of Obligation. We are all disciples. We're all Mary. And uh, we're trying to take our obligation seriously, live up to our New Year's resolutions, and we're part of a great propaganda effort, propaganda meaning the propagating of ideas that must precede wise action on the part of uh, humanity. So we have a great treasure in this ageless wisdom teaching, and let's um, let's get it out there in a manner that it can be assimilated, so that the great change in human consciousness can occur. Of course, it's going to occur from all different sides through crisis, environmental crisis, and uh, ecological issues, and there's all kinds of ways that the pressure will be put upon humanity's consciousness to change, but we have our own little stream of luminescent uh, wisdom provided by the Tibetan and the hierarchy and the higher-ups, and we have to help people uh, Assimilate, recognize, and assimilate. Uh, if you're not a member of the Moria uh, Federation and studying these things in a deep manner, you might want to think about that because uh, this is a very uh, orderly way of going through important aspects of the Aces Wisdom so that you can really. That they can really be part of you, and you can be confident when you um, when you speak with people. I know the disciples in the earlier days, pretty much, you know, they said, "Well, Lord, what shall we say? What shall we say?" You know, don't they said, "Don't worry, the God will put into your mouth what you need to say." But I must say that if you've had a, a, a significant exposure in a systematic way to the age this wisdom and have had to formulate thought along those lines then you are far more confident and convincing in what you do say to help uh, change human consciousness okay so this is not quite an hour it's more like uh, 40 <laughs> maybe 45 minutes and uh, i'll try to get this out to as many of you as i possibly can. Okay, many blessings, lots of love from Tui and me and uh, from all our co-workers at the Moria Federation and onward. <laughs>